I want to focus for the moment, at least, on China and Sinoc, the Chinese big oil company. Uh, the reports that I've heard uh, are is that this is a rather big move by the Department of Commerce. Give us a sense of what the consequences of this will be. Well, first, let me tell you the rationale for it. Sinoc is the largest oil company in China and one of the largest oil companies in the world. <laughs> They've been using mobile rigs, one in particular, to bully countries like Vietnam and others on what they call the South China Seas to stop their own oil development, stop their own drilling in the ocean, and trying even to force them to do things in joint venture with the Chinese. So this is really a continuing abuse of China's violations of maritime principles in that part of the ocean. It's a very serious matter because all of these countries are very dependent on imported oil and imported natural gas, just as China is. So they're trying very much to get a big control over these new fields. And that's what this is designed to deal with. So the South China Sea situation has been developing for some time now, certainly throughout the four years of the Trump administration. I saw today, as I understand, the State Department also issued some restrictions on some individuals involved in the South China Sea oil exploration. Why now? Well, what happens is this. Dealing with these problems is a little bit like whack-a-mole. You put in a set of rules, then the very clever people on the other side try to figure out some way to evade them. So now you need to do new rules to correct the new evasion. These rules will not affect adversely legitimate Western oil companies and others who sell product to Sinook. This is specifically designed to discourage Sinook from abusing the maritime situation and from their bullying people. What they literally have been doing is having these enormous drilling rigs accompanied by a flotilla of vessels from the Chinese Coast Guard, the People's Liberation Army, Navy, all sorts of military accompaniment. So this is not just a commercial enterprise trying to advance its commercial interests. This is Sinook acting as a very active and militarily supported arm of the Chinese government in order to help China take better control of natural resources that really belong to other countries. Uh, you may raise a really important point, and that is maybe Western oil companies. Exxon, as I understand it, has some relationships with Sinook and has some partnerships, actually, I'm sure not in the South China Sea. Will this affect companies such as Exxon in their dealings with Sinook? No. Th this is really focused on the South China Sea, and it is intended to pinpoint things that will restrict their ability to make difficulties out there. It's not meant to interfere with normal commercial relations. It's not meant to try to deprive China of the oil that it imports from various other countries, not intended to deprive China of the natural gas it imports. This is meant to be more pinpointed toward the problems that they have created in the South China Sea. The order that you issued today also involved another Chinese tech company, which is called Skyrisen. Tell me about that company. Is that also related to the South China Sea? No, not really, except in that we believe that that company's output is relevant to military aircraft and various uh, other similar activities. So to the degree that those activities occur in the South China Sea, it would be relevant, but it isn't mainly focused on that. It's mainly focused on the overall problem of the military. Now, it is true that China has been building artificial islands in the South China Sea and has been equipping them with very heavy-duty, very thick concrete airports. So clearly, at some point, 
they intend to use air power uh, in that region. So in that indirect sense, this is a South China Sea thing, but that's not the main focus. Uh, it, uh, it certainly has been a priority of the Trump administration and yours personally uh, to uh, affect the relationship with China and, more importantly, change Chinese behavior over time. Looking back on the last four years, do you think you've succeeded to any substantial degree in that? Well, I think we have made a lot of success. Look at Huawei. Huawei was on its way to dominating world 5G. From a U.S. national security point of view, that would have been one of the worst things because the 5G system is very easy to have back doors so that the calls can be intercepted, so that things can be introduced. So by dealing with the availability of high tech, particularly semiconductors, to Huawei and to ZTE, we've slowed that down. And I believe it's one of the several reasons why so many countries now have changed their mind and are not adopting Huawei. We think that's a very, very important thing. There's nothing more sensitive to national security than telecom. Because think about it, that's what connects everything to everything. And when we have 5G, you literally will have the Internet of Things. So as we have more and more interconnection, you're creating more and more points of vulnerability to a bad foreign partner. So we've been encouraging countries to use what we call trusted partners ones that are not going to put a back door in, ones that are not going to take advantage of frequent upgrades to infiltrate your system, ones that will not take advantage of the maintenance of your system to infiltrate bad things. So that's one set of things that we feel we've achieved. But in general, what we're trying to do, both in terms of limiting the export of things that could be dangerous to the world. We're also trying to deal with the human rights violations. A lot of the systems that uh, Chinese companies are using for facial recognition and other things are leading to mm -hmm. abuses. They are leading to the crackdowns in Hong Kong. They are mm -hmm. leading to the horrible things that they're doing to the Uyghurs in the northwestern part of China. Right. So it's national defense, it's also the abuse of human rights, and it's the general need to try to make them adhere to the rules of the road on their exports to us as well. Picking up on that human rights issue, what's going on in Hong Kong, what's going on in the Uyghurs, how much has the U.S. lost of moral authority given what's happened over the last eight days? You and I both saw, as China tweeted out after the attack on the Capitol, uh, don't lecture us about Hong Kong, look at what you're doing at this point. How much has that weakened the U.S. position in trying to get China to address things like human rights? Oh, I don't think it weakens it at all. Think about Tiananmen Square. That was where young college kids were in a fairly peaceful protest, and they got mowed down. They brought out tanks. I haven't seen any tanks patrolling in the streets of Washington. So it's a wildly different thing. I think it's very unfortunate, all the circumstances of the last week, but that really has nothing to do with getting China an OK pass for their extreme human rights abuses. We're not doing forced labor. We're not uh, imprisoning people, denying them legal representation. We're not doing anything of that sort. So to try to put the two into anything like the same category is really silly.